Hello, it's Janet, and welcome to my channel and the very first Design from Scratch project using Cricut Design Space on my channel. Now, one advantage of designing your own projects is that you can make things not available commercially. Today's project is a good example of that. It's a birthday gift card featuring the birthday llama theme from the hugely popular game Fortnite. This is a great way to show you are the cool mom, grandma, aunt, or sister. Due to copyright laws, we can't make a card exactly the same as Fortnite, but we can get a close representation of it. My 13-year-old son served as my consultant on this project. He helped me pick out the llama and gave me his opinion of the colors and font that I used. It was a fun collaboration between mom and son. This project is divided into five different segments. Each segment covers a specific major step to creating the card. I do want to warn you that though this is a pretty much all designed from scratch, there are a couple elements that you need to have either purchased or have on hand. One is the llama image that I'm going to use and the other is the birthday cupcake image which is part of the Access subscription service. Both images are relatively inexpensive but are vital for this card project. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel. Your thumbs up and a comment would be really awesome too. Thank you for joining and now let's get started. Welcome to part one. In this section, I'll show you how to purchase and download the one element of this card that can't easily be made from scratch. It's the birthday pinata llama. The llama is a cut file I found at a website called Snap Click Supply Company and it's made by Echo Park. It's super cute and perfect for our card. When I purchased the file, it was 99 cents, which I believe is the normal price. So let's begin by showing you how to purchase and download the file so you can use it in Design Space. Keep in mind you could use any birthday pinata image you might have in your collection. And also this is just a good lesson on how to import any files that you buy into Design Space. All right, here is my Google screen. I'm going to just type in snap click supply. That just is the name of the site. It's right here. Snap click supply company. And I'm going to type in the search pinata llama. Well, there you go. And it's right here. And this is actually from uh, Echo Park Paper Company. It's an SVG. So it will cut these layers out, which is what we want. So I'm going to buy this. I'm going to choose Add to Cart. And I already did that previously, so it is already in my cart if I go there. Um, and I'm going to pay for it. It's going to be $1.06 because it's $0.99 cents and I guess there's some tax. I'm going to pay with PayPal, so I will click on PayPal. It's going to take me to PayPal. You could also... Uh, use the proceed to checkout to go to pay with a credit card or a debit card I think and I'm not going to show you all of this but um, I'm gonna you know put blocks on seeing some of this but I'm gonna pay with my checking account that I've already set up and I'm gonna hit continue and now it's gonna ask me for some information because I'm checking out as guest um, I, they don't have me all figured out, but because of PayPal, they've already in, put in my, my personal information here with my address and all that. I'm going to hit continue. Oh, it's asking for my phone number, so I'm going to give them that and hit continue. I'm going to continue with PayPal. And it's going to process the payment. All right, so you're going to have to create an account, I guess. So I'm going to put in my password. Great account. Account has been created. All right, so now I'm going to go to this little thing that says go to downloads. Click on it. And then I'm going to click on that, this green, at least in my screen, it looks green. Now note it says your download of this file expires in one month. That means you're only going to have the ability to download this for 30 days. 
<clears throat> which is, it doesn't mean that you're going to lose access to your download because hopefully you're going to do like we're going to do right now and put it on your hard drive. It only means that you're not going to be able to come to this site and download it after 30 days. Hopefully that makes sense. There's probably only so much room they have really to allow people to put their files. So I'm going to put this um, hmm. I'm going to figure out where to put this. I guess in my downloads file for now. Pinata.svg is the file name. I'm just making note of that. And now it will be available for me to import into Design Space. Well, that concludes part one. We're now on to part two, which will show you how to download the purchase SVG file we just got into Design Space, and then we'll use it to create the Fortnite birthday llama we need for our card. Let's begin. I'm going to go to Cricut Design Space on my desktop, which is where you should have yours as well. All right, and I'm going to choose a new project and upload. I'm going to choose upload because I've got an SVG file. It's one of the files here as opposed to pattern fill. So I'm going to choose upload image. I do need to browse and I'm going to go to the downloads and there's my pinata SVG file right there. I'm going to click open and that is what I want. So I'm going to hit save. And now I can click on this, put insert images. So to kind of begin working with this, I'm going to decrease our viewing down to 50%. It's not shrunk my pieces here, but it has shrunk my viewing screen so I can see everything. Now this llama is way too big for my purposes. It is close to nine inches wide right now. And I need it to, to be more like three and a half in, uh, inches wide. So I'm gonna grab this little arrow, squish it in and eyeball this for approximately three and a half inches. It looks close enough for now. Now I can uh, bring the viewing up again to 100%. Actually, I'm going to make it even 125% and check my llama width again. And we are about three and a half inches. It's close enough. I'm not going to be precise. I don't need to be precise. I just know I need to be really close to three and a half inches. Okay, so now I can right click and ungroup this image. And now I can move the pieces around. To start with, I'm going to delete this. This represents the black eyeball, and then this would be the white of the eye. But I'm going to use a googly eye, so I'm going to get rid of that. And now I'm going to start coloring the pieces to match my character. And keep in mind, I'm just picking colors on the color swatch in Design Space. I'm not going to be printing this on a color printer, so I will use my own colored papers as I see fit. But these representations are enough to help me remember what colors I want. So uh, we're going to start with the main llama. He is going to be this kind of blue. Then I'm going to start clicking the pieces of the fringes and make them the colors they need to be to match the color tones of the character I'm emulating. So I'm going to click on the ear tip. I'm going to hit the shift key and I'm going to keep clicking while I'm holding the shift key all these pieces up to there. Now I'm going to go up to the line type click on that black and choose that light blue. Alright so these are all light blue. This very bottom piece is also light blue. Okay. Now the fringes in between this next one is a green color the next one is kind of a creamy yellow. The next one is purple. And the next one is a bright yellow. The tail pieces, and I'm going to click on the first, hit the shift button, click on the second, go up to my color, I'm going to choose this bright blue. 
Okay, so now we've got all the colors the way that we would like them to be in terms of cutting it out. I have to add a few custom pieces now. This is where the from scratch part comes in so that it better represents the llama from the game that we're emulating. So he has a kind of a lockbox saddle on him. So I'm going to create that really simply. I'm going to hit shapes and do a square. It's, it's awfully big. I'm going to go up here and change it to one inch wide. And since proportions are locked, it will be one inch high. I'm going to set that up here. And I think that's actually not too bad. I'm going to change this color though to a light gray to help me remember that when I pick my paper color. Then it's got two little hinges on it. So I'm going to create those again by a square shape. I'm going to unlock the proportion. And I'm going to start creating like a rectangle here. And I'm going to drag this over to see. I think it needs to be a little bit narrower, maybe just a little bit smaller. There we go. Let's uh, right click and hit copy. Right click somewhere else on the page and hit paste. You're going to get another one. And you can put it on there and you can see, you know, that's going to work for a hinge. I'm going to do these in like a silver metallic paper. Then in the character, there's actually a icon on his lockbox and it's a birthday cupcake. It's a cupcake with a candle on it. So now I'm going to go to images to find that image. And I'm going to filter here to look only at Cricut access items. And then I'm going to type in birthday cupcake. And I know this is the one that I've been experimenting with and I was satisfied with. So I'm going to click on this and choose down here in the bottom right, insert image. Okay, so now we're going to right click and ungroup. And I can start dragging off the layers and deleting them with the delete key. I don't want any of these layers. And it's going to look like I've deleted the whole entire cupcake. But look over here at the layer panel. We have two cupcake silhouettes with the eyeballs crossed out. When you click on that eyeball, voila, now you can see that cupcake silhouette. And on this one, same thing. I don't want this big fat one, so I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to grab that this arrow here to shape it or make it the size I want it. And I'll take it over here to see how that will work and voila. Perfect. So it is going to be black in the paper as well. So I think we're in good shape here. Um, maybe I will change this to yeah just a slightly different gray, a little bit different because again, that's going to be a silver metallic paper. This is going to be a light gray, and then this is going to be black. All right, so now we're ready to lay all these pieces out onto our mat. And if I hit make it right now, it would actually make me do nine different cuts with nine different mats. And I don't want to do that. That's kind of a waste of time in my opinion. So I'm going to uh, use a template to order my pieces on my virtual mat so that I can emulate that on the real mat and cut it all out in one piece. Now I did a very detailed tutorial on this already and you'll find that link up here on your right hand corner of your screen. If that flashed too quickly for you up there, I've left the name of the class so that you can go and find that in my channel lineup. Okay, so here I have the pieces all laid out and also I went ahead and cut them out. But you can see here that I have cut all the different colors right on one mat and that it actually fit well in the areas that I designated it to cut in using the, um, the template for the virtual mat. So um, 
I think it works out pretty well. Now that we have the birthday llama cut out, we can move on to part three. Here I will show you how to create a gift card holder from scratch. I'll also show you how to make the front panel with the message, here's your birthday loot. Let's begin. All right, so here is all the pieces, or here are all the pieces for my gift card holder. This is the main piece. This is the panel that goes on top. And then just for uh, reference, I've got my, you know, basically a, a, my assembled llama, so I kind of know how it will fit on my panel, which is pretty much the way I want it right there. So I'm gonna show you how I created all these pieces. I'll just walk you through so you can create your own. First, we're gonna create this actual card base. So we're going to start by inserting a shape, which is a square. I'm gonna change the size of this square. First, I'm going to unlock the proportions so I can make it any size I want. And I wanna make this five inches wide by 11 inches long. Very good, so you can see this is the same size now as my other one. Now I need to create this little piece, which I will then place on top and cut a hole out using the weld, I'm sorry, not the weld, but the slice function. So to create this little cut apart, it's pretty easy. You hit shapes, hit act, the octagon shape, pull it out here. I'm gonna change the shape of that, so I've gotta unlock the proportions again. The width on this is going to be 3.625. That's actually 3 and 5 eighths inches wide. And then I'm going to make it a half inch high. All right, pretty easy again. So I'm gonna change the color of this piece so we can see what it's doing a little bit more. I'm just gonna pick any old color here. Let's pick this blue. <clears throat> now I need to place it on my panel and cut this hole out. So I'm going to put this all the way to the top of the screen using my mat. I am going to have to increase this a little bit so I can see all the grid lines. And by the way, to see all these grid lines, it's very simple. You just need to go up to here with this pancake that looks, uh, they call it a pancake icon. Uh, and then go to settings. And I've got full grid clicked, so it will show me all, you know, all the squares for a quarter inch in each square, if that makes sense. As opposed to partial grid here, you see all that disappears and you just have the one by one inch. So I want the full grid. Close that up. The reason I need the full grid is because I have to see where exactly five and a half inches is on this piece. So that is going to be right here. This is exactly five and a half inches. And I'm going to increase my view so I can see that even better. Now I can drag this over. Five and a half inches, you remember, was right here. I'm gonna eyeball it. Eyeballing's good enough in my book. I'm gonna bring it over. And I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to move this more towards the center by just clicking my right arrow button on my keyboard. And I'm gonna move it approximately to what looks like in the middle. That may not be exactly in the middle, but it is close enough. Uh, I'm not going to fuss if it's just slightly narrower here or wider here, um, this will work. So I'm going to click on that shape, hold down my shift key and click on my card base shape and I'll know I'm successful in doing that because both of these layers are in gray. We've got that blue piece and we've got the black piece. And now I'm going to hit the slice function right here. I can pull this away and delete it and pull now this away and delete it. And you see I have now a nice slice in my card base just exactly as I wanted. Okay, now I'm going to lower my view percentage again. And I'm gonna pull that aside. Now I'm gonna show you how to make this uh, card panel that's got the words cut apart. Again, I'm going to choose a shape. It's gonna be that square. I need to change the size of that by first clicking off proportions and going up to the size and this is going to be 
by 4.25. Oh, I, I don't know why that didn't quite work, but anyway, let's try that again. <laughs> 4.25, there we go. So we have 4.75 by 4.25. You can see that's the same size now as that. Now we're going to insert our letters in here. Let's make this a little bit bigger again. So to do that, we're going to click text. I'm going to type the, wor the word here's. And I'm going to go up here to the font type. I'm going to type in the name of the font that I wanted. This was uh, uploaded previously and I have a video that shows exactly how to upload new fonts and where I sp specifically got this font which is called Niagaraphobia. So it's a little bit of a mouthful but uh, I highly advise if you don't know how to get fonts into your design space or into your computer in general, uh, go to that video and it'll show you how to do that. Now, the place that I got the Niagara Phobia font is from My Font Space, or Font Space, actually, not My Font Space, sorry, just Font Space. So you can find that one if you want and download it. I tried to find something that was as similar to Fortnite as I could. It's not the same, but it's close enough, I think. According to my son, he, he thinks it's close enough, so, you know, he plays Fortnite all the time. I'll take that. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go in search fonts and it's going to be N-I-A-G-A-R and there it is. I want this single layer cutting option and it's created here in that. Now I want my font size to be 50. I just know that that's what it is. And I also uh, need to retype this in all capitals. I should have done that in the beginning. Oh, let's try it again. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to right click, hit copy, click anywhere off somewhere on the mat, and then I'm going to hit right click and paste. And there it is. So I'll just double click on that and change it to your. Ah. Boy, I'm having trouble typing today. There we go. And now right click off of that. Right click and hit paste again. It's going to make another here's. You can use that to put in birthday. Click off. Right click, paste. Got another word here, and this one's going to say loot with an exclamation point. Click off. I do individual letters, or I sorry, individual words here so I can manipulate how close they are together and all that. There are other ways to do it, but I feel like this is the easiest way for me anyway, so that's what I'm showing you. I'm going to use this dark blue again for all these so that you can see them against my black panel. I just click on each word and choose the color. Could have done that with the first word and then every word would have been the same, but this will work as well. I'm going to drag my pinata over the top. Now it wants to go underneath, so I've got to right click and say send to front. So I can set that on there about where I think it's going to go on my card when I place it. Again, remember this is cut and assembled and then placed on top of your card. It is not um, going to be a print and cut. So I'm going to start with here's. I'm going to bring that up here and just kind of start laying out how I want it to look. actually not too bad. Maybe I uh, will separate here's and yours just a little bit so that it's very obviously two words there. 
Okay, so now I can take this away and I'm going to start slicing the words into the panel just like we did here. Uh, it's just slightly trickier with words because you can't do more than one layer at a time when you are um, when you're doing a, the slice function. So you can only choose the first word, hit down shift and click on the rect or the, your panel and then go down here and hit slice. Now you're going to have to um, send your black your black panel here backed a little bit so you've got to right click send it back there you go now you can see the other letters again <clears throat> and the words so right click on the your press the shift click again on the card panel hit slice click on that right click send it back so you that will allow us to see the birthday again. Click on that, hold down shift. Again, click on the panel, slice. Right click, send it back. Click on the loot, shift key, click on the panel, hit slice. And now we can drag away our panel from our words can highlight all of those, delete them. And now we have our panel as well. So when you cut this, it will cut these letters out for you. And that's basically it. These are the pieces you need to go ahead and create your card base. So just make sure, you know, this is my tip. After you cut it and you take this panel off, don't throw away these words too hastily because you are going to need just a few little bits and pieces from them. All right, that's it. Now you can hit the make it and it, it will lay these out for you and you can cut them. Thanks for following along so far. We are now moving to part four, which will show you how to create an internal card panel and a birthday message written with pen using the right feature of Cricut Design Space. I'll also show you how to create an arrow shape from scratch. Let's start. Okay, so I'm going to make the internal card panel with the message happy birthday and an arrow pointing to the gift card. And instead of cutting this out, I'm going to write the message with a pen just so you can see another method to get text. So I'm going to start by inserting a shape, choose square. I'm going to make this square into a rectangle or at least a sort of a rectangle, I guess, but the size is 4.75 by 4.25. So it's not a perfect square, but it's not a true rectangle either, I guess. But anyway, here it is. I'm going to change it to just a light green so we can see everything a lot better. Uh, I'm also going to create an arrow. So let's do a shape, hit the square, hit the triangle, and we're going to create a arrow from this. So take off the lock for proportions and make yourself the long part of the arrow. And just to make it easier, I'm going to make it the same size as uh, it would be a half inch in this case by two inches. And that way I can put the center line, this one, right through the center of my rectangle so I know what the center is. And that's important because when I add my arrow, I will know that I'm centered on my rectangle and it will look right. So next step is to encircle the whole thing with those two shapes. Go down to the weld option here in the bottom right. And now I've got one image. So let's set that aside. This is of course way too big for what we need, but we're going to make that the right size as soon as we get our letters on and know how to proportion it. So next thing is text. And I'm going to type happy, and it's gonna be all caps. I'm gonna hit enter, and then type birthday with an exclamation point. And you'll notice that I have the Niagara Phobia text font already working here. If you don't have that one, you would just 
Click this and choose the one you want. And now I'm going to show you what I think is a pretty new feature, a, a new upgrade, I, I believe. I don't think this was here before. If it was, I apologize. But I just noticed it. And it's this advanced uh, option here. If you click on it, you can ungroup to letters or ungroup to lines. So in this case, I'm going to choose ungroup to lines. And now instead of one phrase, I have two which makes this a lot easier to manipulate closer together and so on. So I like that little feature. It could save some time. You can also always do the line space option to get the two lines closer together when it's one piece. But heck, that, that was extremely fast and it's a lot easier just to manipulate it as a word in my opinion anyway. So I'm going to set this in. And I'm leaving some room on the right side for my arrow. Now I kind of know how big I want my arrow to be. I'm going to make it smaller. But I also want to make it a little bit wider, I think. And then make it bigger again. Let's see how that kind of looks. Yep. So let's point this over this direction. Maybe it's a little bit too big. I'm going to just make it slightly smaller. All right, there we go. Now, if I were to cut this now, it would cut. And I don't want it to cut. I want it to write. So I'm going to change. First of all, I'm going to select all my characters, all my words in the arrow. And instead of cut, I'm going to choose draw. And now it's going to draw happy birthday instead of cut it. Oh, one other thing we got to do is we've got to attach this so that it doesn't move around. So we'll hit attach. And now when we choose make it, we're all set up here to cut the internal panel and actually write it. So what you would do at this point is hit the continue and then it's going to ask you to put in the pen in the holder of the explore and in the holder of the um, maker if you have it. So either way you'll get a pen into into the holder so that you can then go ahead and cut and draw this and I'll show you the result in a moment. Congratulations on creating your own card from scratch. We'll finish this project in part five. It's time to put the card together now that we have designed, cut, and written all the parts needed for our Fortnite card. So let's finish it up. So I'm going to start by showing you the internal card panel that we just created and I have um, put through my Cricut machine using pens to write the happy birthday and the arrow. I'll show you what I use for pen. It is just a jelly roll pen. It is not one that is Cricut and you see that black line there? I just drew a line with a Sharpie pen that represented the approximate same place on my Cricut scoring stylus and then inserted that into my Explorer's pen holder and went ahead and used that. It, these jelly roll pens I find work really well and there's the final result. So next I'm going to show you how you put together the card base which is the gift card holder. If you remember this was a 5 by 11 inch rectangle and I went ahead and scored it in the middle and on one inch for each side. So four and a half and then another by six and a half. And then you can fold it together like so. You see how that goes together? And then when it is all folded, you can open it up and your gift card will be inserted inside and kind of stand up. It's a pretty neat little card base. And you can use this for a lot of things besides this Fortnite card. So to put it together, it just needs a little bit of adhesive. I just used tape runner here that is pretty close to the top of that fold line. And then put it together. I will uh, use my bone folder to just get a really good seal here by pressing down. Here's a quick snippet of what it looks like inside and how you put your gift card into it. Just slip it into that gap and you've got a cute little gift card holder. I'm now going to put on the birthday message panel to the front and I'll use wet glue for this. This is uh, art glitter glue. It's great because you have really good precision with it and it dries completely clear. So I'll place that onto my card panel, or my card front actually, 
and make sure that that's secure. Now you'll notice that the letters, say for example the R or the O, they have, uh, they're missing their little bits in the center. So I take the entire letter off the mat, and that's why I said save your letters after you cut this out. And that entire letter is going to go into that space, including where that little bit is in the center of the upper part of the letter. And I'm going to take that little bit out, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to it, just teeny bit, and then put it back in place. And this is where the art glitter glue is so great because if anything does seep through, it's going to be clear and it's not a shiny clear. It's matte, so you really don't notice it. And that's how you get really nice looking letters in this panel. So here it is all complete where I've added the, the bits for the O's, the R's, the A's, and so on. Now I'm ready to place the birthday llama on here and I've put him on uh, some foam tape. And of course I put him together off camera. I did use my scissors and just cut some thin slices of black to make a bridle and I just applied that and trimmed it to his head. We're almost done. I'm just going to show you how I applied the internal panel to the car just with again some art glitter glue and press that in and we're ready to go. It's all ready for the gift card to be inserted now. So let's take a final look at the card. You can see how cute that turned out. We open it up and we've got a happy birthday message there plus a place to put our gift card. It just inserts in the slot that we created and it will be a very cute presentation. You can see when you open it, it is standing up and looks very cute. And that completes my Design From Scratch Fortnite inspired Birthday Llama Loot Card. I hope you enjoyed this project. I sure learned a lot through this process and I look forward to making future videos very soon. If you've got any ideas about what you'd like to see next, please leave those ideas in the comment section. Well, once again, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate you visiting and I've put up here uh, the link to subscribe to my channel and also to a couple more videos that I think you might be interested in seeing if you like this one. So I hope to see you back soon. But until then, keep crafting. Bye.